four years ago, I asked myself, what's going to happen when Elon Musk, OpenAI, one of these artificial intelligence, machine learning fellows, characters, innovators, comes up with a ghostwriting system, wherein all you have to do as the author is type in a few ideas, a few stories, a couple of topics, you hit submit, and boom, 75,000 word completed manuscript is produced in that person's voice. What's going to happen when that day comes? I expected that day sooner than later, which is why a year and a half ago, I became the world's first ghostwriter to use a software driven process to map my author's voices using Swing Library and Java 8.1. I developed a proprietary program that allowed me to study the unique patterns of my author's voices. Basically, what separates them from everyone else? It's the data science of stylometry. There is a link on screen right now where you can check out that video uh, from a year and a half ago. Now, I did expect that there would one day come something even more sophisticated than that, something that was so easy it's literally point, click, and produced. That ghostwriting AI that day is in fact upon us. You may have heard about this thing called GPT-3. It's the result of an artificial intelligence team, the point of which is to create instant content that is unlike anything you have seen before in terms of its quality. I mean, we've seen AI bots that transcribe stuff. We've seen, if you have Google uh, Google products like Gmail, you've seen the autocomplete, right, where you're, you're typing something out and it suggests, even with some pretty intense accuracy, um, what it is that you're going to be uh, typing next. But this thing, GPT-3, which I understand is a product of OpenAI. Uh, one of the people uh, associated with OpenAI, one of the founders, of course, is none other than Elon Musk himself. Here's what's so interesting about GPT-3. I want to share with you what Ed Leon Klinger wrote on Twitter in this thread that went viral, and then talk a little bit about what this means for ghostwriters, authors, and the publishing industry. And we're going to do that in the next few minutes. So let's dive right in. The first thing, Ed Leon Klinger ran an experiment, basically taking this software called GPT-3 and having it turn normal speech instantly into legalese. Look at this. He typed in this sentence right here, plain language. My landlord entered my apartment without my permission. So Ed Leon Klinger, he types this in to this software, GPT-3, that he's using. Many, it's in beta testing right now. And then the software spits this out. It translates it into legalese. Defendant entered plaintiff's dwelling without plaintiff's consent. Now this one really blow your mind. So Ed Leon Klinger, he wrote this boring old language. My apartment had mold and it made me sick. So he types it into the software, GPT-3, and it translates that instantly into this. Plaintiff's dwelling was infested with toxic and allergenic mold spores, and plaintiff was rendered physically incapable of pursuing his or her usual and customary vacation, occupation, and or recreation. The end of the legal profession is upon us, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Now, it will probably take a few months or years for something like this, GPT-3, to become mainstream, but you might be feeling the hair standing up on the back of your neck right now, as certainly I did when I first heard about this. I did expect this within the next 10 years, within the 2020s, which is why I became the first ghostwriter in the world to use software, bring software into ghostwriting, the science of author voice into my work so that no one could tell that my clients ever worked with a ghostwriter. It was them. But this is something entirely, entirely science fiction becoming science fact. Let's look at another one here. This is wild. Ed Leon Klinger, he mentions that going from creative industries like writing to ones like design, and you might be able to see what's happening here. So look at this. This is GPT-3. Again, look at what's happening. This person, Sharif Shamin, he is simply typing in instructions for what he wants in computer code, HTML. 
basically look at what's happening here. I believe it's I believe it's HTML or yeah the JSX code. I apologize JSX code. So look at what's happening here. He's typing in instructions into this artificial intelligence, this GPT-3, a button for every color of the rainbow, generate, boom, there it is. All of the computer code that you would then embed, that you would put in your website, in your style sheet of your website, that would then illustrate exactly what it is. And then look at this. A table of the richest countries in the world with the column's name and GDP. Wow, look at all of that code instantly created exactly as it was. And it's going to make a couple of tweaks here. So it's not perfect, but look at that right there. It grabs it directly from the internet. This is like if Google became God type of technology. Exaggerating a little bit, but you get the point. And that's just from legalese, and that's from this. Here's another one that's super interesting. Look at this right here. Poetry. This software, GPT-3, writes poetry an uber poem it was given a prompt and look at this quietly softly eerily sometimes sometimes not someday someday perhaps if you come if you work if you try you too could write like them if you get up early enough they whisper it goes on and on and on and on as if you are reading an actual poem a brilliant poem now i want to show you one that is just super crazy look at this one music is the most advanced form of mathematics this sentence was just written by an AI through the looking glass. It's like, wait a second. If it's able to pull billions of data points from all across the internet, is it plagiarizing? Is it simply an aggregator of content? No, which is what this example proves. Look at that. Ed Leunklinger, he takes this inspirational quote that was made up by this AI, searches on Google, and look, it does not exist before. Now, here's another interesting one. Look at this right here. So the computer can do law, coding, poetry, philosophy. What about the role of CEO? Look at this. GPT-3 can write genuinely helpful data-driven business strategies. So look at this person right here. They simply typed in to GPT-3 as if they were asking a, hyper, a super intelligence how to run an effective board meeting. And it wrote a three-step process to recruit board members that this person thinks that they should actually probably write down. Look at this. Step one, spend time building an effective board. Step two, focus your recruiting efforts, target list, current. Look at all this. This was instantly created by this artificial intelligence from a single prompt, how to run an effective board meeting. Can you imagine having as an author Okay, I want to have a uh, a topic. Let's say you know I'm going to um, uh, I'm going to, I'm an entrepreneur, and one of the chapters is going to be about about my uh, my my advisory board, my board of uh, my board of advisors, my board of in investors, and I'm going to have a section in there about how to run an effective board meeting. You type all of that information in as an aspiring author. Each one of your topics you want to talk about inside of your book, and what happens? You get a completed chapter like this, like this that is ready to go, just about ready to go. Look at that. Can you imagine having this for your next book? Can you imagine being a freelance writer competing with something like this? Ed Leon Klinger notes, the examples are endless and this thing has only just been released into the wild. OpenAI, again, is the thing here. Now, what about fiction? I'll leave you with this example here, just as Ed does. He comes up with this, this example story here, some uh, world-renowned art expert kind of giving you a, a setting, a scenery, kind of a, a fiction. Um, this character uh, is at the Louvre there in, uh, in Paris. He stops in front of um, Leonardo da Vinci's world-famous Mona Lisa. And then the character, as Ed Leon Klinger writes in this kind of this writing prompt, is now going to describe the painting. Look at this. This is the internal dialogue, the, mono, the internal model, monologue, rather, that this character has as written by this artificial intelligence, GPT-3. If you read this right here, it is as if it was written by someone who is intimately familiar with Da Vinci, Mona Lisa, the painting, with how to write literary fiction. It's like GPT-3 is the world's best 
at everything, at everything, almost, almost. You're reading this, it's like, how in the world did this do this? Now, that's what you're thinking. So here we are asking ourselves some kind of difficult questions about what does this GPT-3 revolution mean for publishing, for writing? Is this the end of creative professions like ghostwriter, like freelance writer? I don't think so. I think what we have here is akin to what's called the CMS, a content management system. If you have ever built a website, you have something like WordPress, um, Squarespace, Shopify. These are, these are content management systems. Basically, uh, kind of a, a canvas for you to start building your website from. Now, you can put up a basic website literally in minutes, and it'll function, right? But if you want custom, uh, if you want custom features, if you want applications running your website, if you want to, let's say, expand the menu or, sh or shrink the menu, you're going to want an expert who can come in and write that custom code for you, that HTML code for you on the back end. I believe that is akin to what we're seeing now as GPT-3 works its way into industries such as creative writing, authorship, publishing, where before these CMS platforms like WordPress, when you wanted to build a website, you couldn't just, okay, I'm going to download a, a theme, a template, a program like WordPress, and I'm up and going. You had to start completely from scratch, working with some, working with an individual or web development team from the very beginning. There was no plug and play business before these CMS platforms. What I'm expecting right now is us as a, a publishing industry to move in that direction. So what will happen? Yes, you can probably go directly to a software like this and put in some prompts and come up with some pretty good information a lot faster. As you can see, it's instant. Imagine how many hours would have to go into writing a paragraph like this, a fiction like this, internal, I mean, we're, we're talking days, weeks, months for something this sophisticated, built on years of experience from the author who would have to know intimately the art industry, the world of art, in order to write something like this. GPT-3 did it literally just like that, just like that. So here's what's going to happen. I suspect we're not going to see the disappearance of ghostwriters. We're going to see them take on a new role as an expert in working with GPT-3 and other software like it to assist authors in using tools like this to generate, essentially, first drafts of text, and then going deeper, asking more specific, poignant questions in the same way that I, as a ghostwriter, I'm not just showing up and asking my author, okay, tell me about your book, and I'm going to transcribe everything you say. Tell me about chapter one. No, I'm going, I'm asking very specific questions, probing questions, because I know what works in a nonfiction book, in a fiction book. So in addition to talking to the author, diving deep into the core ideas, their explanations, their demonstrations, and their examples of those ideas. I see myself as a ghostwriter in the year 2030, doing that with you and with something like GPT-3, where we are simply asking very, very specific questions. It could be for a book. It could be for a blog post. It could be for a speech. And we're getting this first draft of text and generated instantly on the spot. But that doesn't mean it should actually be in the book. We still need to restructure and refine, work the author's voice into it, use existing solutions such as mine to make sure it is the best, most persuasive representation of our author's ideas. It is like when you are building a beautiful business website now. You have a template that you download. Yeah, I use the Divi template for my WordPress, uh, one of my WordPress websites. I still need hours and hours and hours of web development work done to customize and play with everything that's there so that it is exactly as I need it to be. In some cases, my web development team is working directly with the tools provided by the WordPress a theme that I'm working with. That is what I see writing books, blog posts, any type of content in the future. It'll be the ghostwriter interfacing with GPT-3 on behalf of the author and also with the author in the same way that you as the owner of a business have a website and your web development team works directly with that website and with you and you with the website. 
that will be the future of ghostwriting, of creating all manner of content. If you're the type of person that wants a website up instantly and good enough's good enough and you just need, it, need the basics, then you'll be able to write books pretty much in five minutes, the same way that you can throw up a website. But that doesn't mean it's going to be a commercially viable book or that the information you're getting from the GPT-3 software or something like it is actually something that should be in the book. So rather than GPT-3 and other artificial intelligence, machine learning algorithms, natural language processing, all these technologies, rather than replacing or supplanting ghostwriters, creative writers, book coaches, and editors, they are going to force us to take on a new, and I believe, more useful role, not just as creative experts on the written word and what's going to be a commercially viable product, but also becoming experts in interfacing with advanced technology. The future is here. I expected it would be coming. Not quite this fast, but if there's anything we learned about technology is that it surprises us at every turn.